my colleague Abi Agina standing by again to bring us deeper insights into this conversation and of course what else is happening up there today. Abi, maybe one day one uh, common president across all of East Africa, do you think? Well, it is an envision that um, the East Africa community will have a functioning political federation where we'll be hopefully one day having one president representing the entire economic bloc. But of course, there are still far-reaching challenges that are affecting this particular um, uh, push to have a political federation or CABA. There's still talk of having the monetary union. The common market protocol is yet to be fully implemented. So we still have a long way to go, Wakaba. Indeed, uh, it is uh, heartening for now to hear that uh, we won't get to elect the East African president very soon. But what exactly is the conversation where you are today? We do know, of course, uh, that there has been uh, the sittings of the ELA, the Legislative Assembly, to be able to well delve into the issues uh, that have been de bedeviling that organization, especially including, of course, the funding uh, conversation. Also going on, of course, is uh, the fact uh, that there is a move to start to train and explain to more stakeholders just how the East Africa community works, Abi. Well, like you rightly put it there, Akaba, the East African Legislative Assembly members are actually in Nairobi, and it's a very common practice that um, they do visit one of the member countries every year. Um, for this time round, they'll be looking forward to be addressed by President Uhuru Kenyatta come next week. For now, it's, it's a question of the parliament, which is the body that is under the East Africa community, that is IALA, which com comprises of members that have been nominated from across the six member countries. They're meeting in Nairobi. Um, some of the key items for discussion, of course, is to address matters to do with the trade and also tackling matters to do with non-tariff barriers. But more interestingly, one of the biggest and, and doings that has continued to plague the region is the limited knowledge of the media in, when it comes to doing in-depth reporting. And um, right now, I'm at the Hilton Hotel where there is the East Africa community media training. But we want to just uh, take some insights from one of the key uh, facilitators of this event, that is David Ohito, who is now joining us live here from the Hilton Hotel. Perhaps um, um, Mr. Ohito, digital editor for Standard Media, um, what stands out for you in this Yala visit by the members? Uh, thank you having, uh, for having me on this. I think the ELA members have uh, an honor to you know, report back to the citizens of East Africa on what pieces of legislation they put forward that will promote uh, integration of the East African community. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will be looking forward to the address by President Uhuru Kenyatta uh, when he meets them on Tuesday, possibly, to take uh, stock of what progress has have been made over time and what is in line uh, to be achieved over the next few period mm -hmm. to help with the movement of people and goods across the member countries. Mm -hmm. And um, it is uh, an interesting time that right now we're also having the ESC training journalists who have been reporting on these issues. And perhaps as someone who has been sitting in the sessions, what, what are some of the key challenges still facing the media when it comes to um, reporting on issues of integration? A very good question. One of the key critical issues that have emerged in today's session has been lots of bureaucracy seen at EAC that, uh, you know, we live in an information era. Journalists want information at it and falls. They're looking for the right updated statistics, yes. but it takes a lot of time between uh, when a journalist sends questionnaires to the uh, secretariat and the relevant ministries and the time they get back the answers. And this really slows down uh, the good storytelling of the EEC story. And I think it's time for EEC secretariat and, and the line ministries to revolutionize how they will communicate, take advantage of the websites and the information era to avail content in an easy and readily acceptable way for processing by journalists. Indeed, David Ohito, oh, uh, sorry, David Ohito 
They are just trying to throw the challenge to the East Africa community, which has been driving this integration process, Wakaba. And right now, I want to quickly bring in a gentleman who works with the EAC, and that is Simon Owaka, who is the public relations officer, the senior public relations officer. Perhaps, Mr. Owaka, what are some of the key objectives of this training? Now, uh, this training has been organized by the East African Community Secretariat and uh, the German International Cooperation Agency, GIZ. We basically want to build uh, capacity uh, for journalists on the integration process so that they are aware about um, what the stages involved, uh, what are some of the challenges, uh, some of the co complicated issues, so that when they are reporting to members of the public, they'll be able to educate them because they'll be, they, uh, they do understand the issues mm -hmm and can uh, simplify them, those, complica those complex issues, mm -hmm. so that um, the people of East Africa can understand and get on the integration process. So we want uh, uh, to build focal, gen focal journalists okay. on the ESE integration uh, within media houses all over East Africa. All right. So all we have right. started with around five journalists from uh, five countries, namely Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania, and the Republic of Uganda. So we are starting with 25 but we intend to train as many as possible so that uh, we have a, a, a critical pool of journalists who understand and can explain to East Africans what the integration process is all about. Thank you very much there, Simon Owaka, who is the senior public relations officer for the East Africa Community Secretariat, which is based in Arusha. So really, Wakaba, right now, it's a question of what are the gaps that continue to face the media when it comes to reporting on regional integration issues. And of course, as you know, the ESC um, design and the model is actually borrowed from the European Union, which is one of the successful unions across the world. And it is hoped that the ESC would one day get to that level, Wakaba. Want to get so successful that we had the Brexit way, but indeed real lessons to be borrowed from the European community and indeed the European Union as regards political integration and of course the progress in different areas of the economy. Abhi again are there coming to us live.